everyone welcome back to one another session let's learn about part 2 of detail explanation of chapter 1 snapshot the summer of a beautiful white horse by william sarwen before we get started with the we continue with the story let's have a quick recapitulation Aram and Murad were cousins and they belonged to the Garoglanian family. This family was extremely poor, yet they were famous for their honesty. Murad was fond of adventures. Murad and Aram both had craze for horse riding. Murad comes to Aram with the stolen horse to give him a chance of horse riding. Aram could not resist the temptation and enjoys horse riding with Murad. he was keen to ride the horse alone just like murad who had a way with everything the story continues from here the sun was almost up and aram told him it was his turn to ride murad got off and aram sat on the horse he was fearful and the horse did not move murad tried to guide him by saying that he should try to kick into his muscles and told him that he should hurry because they need to take him back before everyone wakes up aram kicked into the muscles of the horse to which the horse again raised and breathed out the horse almost began to run and aram didn't know what to do next the horse started going towards the road that leads to the vineyard of dikram halabian it began to move over vines and aram fell down the horse continued to run and murad came running down the road towards him murad told aram that he is not worried about him but they need to find the horse they both went different ways to find him he instructed aram to be kind if he saw him anywhere aram looked for the horse down the road and murad went towards the irrigation ditch he came back after 30 minutes with the horse he told him to jump over as the whole world was awake by then aram asked what would they do now to which murad told him uh, about two options take him back or hide him until tomorrow murad was not worried and aram knew that murad would hide him somewhere and not take him back for a while aram asked him where murad would hide him murad told him about a place he knew which would be a perfect place for hiding the horse aram eagerly asked him when he had stolen the horse it appeared to him that murad had been taking the horse right uh for morning rides for quite some time and he just came to him this morning uh, to ask him to ride along because he knew he was longing to ride a horse murad shuts him down by asking a counter question about who talks about stealing a horse aram tried to change the question by asking him since how long was he riding the horse every morning murad told him that morning was the first time aram was not convinced and asked him if he was telling the truth murad said if anyone asked aram he should say that it was true he further added that he didn't want them to be liars but they had to say only this aram agreed and murad walked the horse quietly towards the barn of a deserted vineyard it belonged to a farmer named fatavzian the barn had some oats and alfalfa grass they started walking home murad told aram that it was not easy to get the horse to behave nicely as it wanted to run wild at first he told him again that he had a way with a horse and he could get them uh, or get a horse to do whatever he wants to he told him that horses understood him aram amusingly asked him how he controlled the horse to which murad said he has an understanding with the horse aram asked him what sort of understanding did he have with him to which murad told him a simple and honest one aram confessed he would also like to know how to have an understanding with the horse murad assured aram by saying that he is still a small boy and he will learn 
when he will be 13. Arun went home and ate breakfast. That day, his uncle Khosro visited his house for coffee and cigarettes. He sat in the parlor and was remembering the old country when a person came to visit him. This person's name was John Byro, a farmer, who learned to speak American because of loneliness. His mother bought Byro some coffee and tobacco. Uh, John Byro sipped and smoked and told them about his missing white horse who was stolen last month and he is not able to find it. Khosro roared again that it is no harm and shouted that why was he crying over a lost horse when they had lost their homeland. John Byro replied to Khosro that he would not bother as he lives in a city but his country was of no good without his horse. He said the horse was very important for his survival. Khosro shouted that he must not pay any attention to it. John Byro told him that he walked down 10 miles to come here. Khosro shouted that he has legs to which John said his left leg Hurts. Khosro again tried to shut him down by saying that he should not pay any attention to it. John Byro shared that the horse cost him $60. Khosro said he would spit on the money after which John got up and went away slamming the door. Aram's mother told John Byro that uh, um, John had a gentle heart uh, and uh, as he was homesick and he was uh, such a large man. Aram went to Murad and he was sitting under a peach tree talking to a robin bird. He was repairing the wing that was hurt. Aram told him about John Byro and how he visited their house and he wanted his horse. Aram asked him not to return the horse until he learns to ride it. Murad told Aram that it will take him a whole year to learn to ride a horse. Aram said they could keep the horse for a year then. Murad stood up on his feet and expressed surprise and shouted at him about encouraging him to be a thief in spite of being a member of the Garoglian family. He declared that the horse should go to his true owner. Aram asked when would they have to return the horse to which Murad said in six months. Then he threw the bird into the air. It almost fell twice but finally was successful to fly away. For the next two weeks they both would take the horse out of the barn and ride it. But every morning the horse would throw Aram and run away whenever he tried to ride it alone. He still hoped he would learn to ride it the way his cousin Murad did. Once on the way to the deserted vineyard to hide the horse again, they met John Byro who was on his way to town. Murad insisted on talking to him as he had a way with farmers. Murad wished him good morning and John Byro saw the horse very carefully. John Byro wished them back and asked the name of the horse. Murad said, my heart in an Armenian language. Byro complimented that it was a lovely name for a lovely horse. He swore that it was his horse that was stolen weeks ago. He asked if he could look into his mouth after looking from tooth to tooth it said it was his horse if he didn't know his parents he said the horse was a twin of his horse he further said that his family is all for uh, honesty but the horse looks just like the one he lost a man who is suspicious would easily believe his eyes and not his heart he wished them and went away then. Murad wished him back. The next morning they took the horse back to John Byro's vineyard and put it in his barn. The dogs followed them around without making any sound. Murad replied they would not bark at him since 
he had a way with the dogs. Murad put his arms around the horse, then pressed his nose into the horse's nose. He patted him and then they went away. That same afternoon, John Byro came to Aram's house in his surrey and showed his mother his horse that returned. He said he didn't know what to think as the horse is much stronger now with a better temper. He thanked God. Uncle Khosro, who was in the parlor too, became irritated and again shouted at him to be quiet as his horse has been returned and he asked him to pay no attention to it. And that's all about this story.